Welcome back, everybody. Derek Sue, your East Oakland advocate. Happy Fourth of July weekend. Today is Friday for a lot of folks. You took off uh, and you're headed out of town. Some of you are staying around for fireworks shows and, and barbecues uh, for this long weekend. Because this is uh, one of those really nice ones. Because I look forward to uh, a long weekend like this from uh, my work because uh, it got me away uh, out of the norm. And, and so uh, I we took uh, the boat out. And we had um, uh, a boat in uh, the Berkeley Marina, our 26-footer. Uh, we had our 21-footer uh, on the trailer in Alameda. And um, also we had the 30-footer, which was more for uh, if we're going outside the gate and doing coastal. But instead, uh, we, uh, <coughs> uh, we did uh, inland. Uh, rivers and so uh what we did on fourth of july we we would take uh, uh trips on the delta and so on the delta uh we we enjoyed going there it was it was a nice relaxing trip we could do a fast trip up to sacramento and uh back for uh like a three-day weekend or take our time which is what we typically did and we would on a weekend like this uh we would go a full week uh, out out and back before we we come back home and then we'd have our dogs on board uh, we uh, enjoy the, the uh, tranquil uh, cruise uh, we didn't have to worry about crowds we didn't worry about traffic uh, or anything like that and, and what was really nice uh, traveling by the water it was very peaceful we didn't have any incidents uh, other than watching uh, some of the the gray heads uh, burning up the kids uh, inheritance with their uh, cigarette boats on, on the main part of the american river and, and i mean these are were million dollar uh, high speed go fast boats you know the big engines you you hear them long before they even come around a bend but you hear those engines winding out <laughs> there in the delta and so uh, uh even with the noise from my own boat i could still hear those but it it was uh a lot of fun and, and uh, as a boating i was also a boating safety officer for the united states power and sail squadron uh, our particular chapter unfortunately was decommissioned uh in 2007 and uh, we were decommissioned because we just didn't have the membership anymore it's a uh, what the u.s uh, power squadron power and sail squadron is it's a volunteer boating safety organization and so uh, we are certified by the united states coast guard we teach uh, boating safety classes along with seamanship classes for, to get certified for a wide variety of uh, uh, boating duties. Uh, we even had sailing classes uh, available. So uh, very, very experienced uh, boaters in this organization. I was one of them. Uh, I was actually uh, a third lieutenant uh, in, in the uh, organization for Oakland. And like I said, Oakland was decommissioned in 2007 and so the uh the rank was we have the, the commander uh at the time uh, the xo executive officer first lieutenant second lieutenant and then third lieutenant which was me <clears throat> and and what we did we promoted boating safety uh we we had back in the bay area back then a lot of uh, boat shows going on and so i would be one of those uh, officers that would be manning the uh, booth at the boat show talking about boating safety also promoting our boating safety classes getting people certified in boating so some of the advanced classes that uh, were were offered is uh, besides the seamanship but also navigation uh, and uh, charting reading and deciphering uh, charts and maps how to read them uh, gps uh, um, 
uh, usage. And so there's a lot of classes that uh, we taught uh, young boaters, new boaters, uh, inexperienced boaters. And, and these were all U.S. Coast Guard certified classes. And, and we taught them on campuses uh, like uh, Piedmont High because um, I taught classes uh, up there at, at Piedmont High uh, on Thursday nights uh, for uh, during the summer. And, and it was always real interesting and, and it was always a lot of fun. And that's one of the things that I, I wanted to stress. And, and we knew there was uh, an issue uh, with the boating industry for the Bay Area because uh, we were losing members and we were losing uh, uh, boaters uh, and not we weren't attracting the new boaters that uh, would keep the industry and the recreational uh, uh, portion of boating alive here in in the Bay Area and so because it's so expensive uh, the boats were getting more and more expensive uh, EPA was uh, putting in uh, more requirements for things on boats like catalytic converters now. And so boats and, and watercrafts are required to have catalytic converters on board because the, the boats, you know, they did uh, put out a lot of uh, pollutants. Uh, so I, I do have to admit that um, the catalytic converters uh, probably have helped. I don't know, I never owned a boat uh, uh, that requirement uh, came into place after I had left boating. So um, uh, I don't know how well those perform. Uh, but anyway, um, we'd uh, assist the Coast Guard on with on-the-water events, such as Fourth of July uh, events uh, on the bay. Uh, also, uh, a big event that, that we were called upon a lot of times by the USCG when they were short of help, that would be around Fleet Week, the, the air show. And so Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, uh, at times, our organization would be assisting the United States Coast Guard uh, with maintaining uh, a line, uh, a safety uh, zone for uh, the recreational boaters so that they're not directly underneath the show and, and out of danger in the event that something catastrophic happens. Uh, and also we were, uh, we weren't the ones looking for, for drunks or anything. That was the actual USCG uh, patrol boats going in and out of the crowd. All we did was just maintain a line. Also, we were uh, a safety crew uh, that, uh, with uh, first aid. And so we were kind of like uh, the paramedics uh, on the water during the event. Uh, so we did a lot. And, and um, one of the things that, that I did, I was one of those uh, inspectors, boating safety inspectors. I helped you stay out of trouble. Because uh, uh, what I would do uh, at times, I would go to one of the boat launching ramps here in uh, the Bay Area, such as Berkeley, Oakland, Alameda, San Leandro, and set up a booth, a uh, table, uh, show who I am. I had my identification, and, and I would uh, give you a free safety inspection. And that safety inspection, what that did was in the event that you were boarded out on the bay and you were missing something, you could be cited for that. And so uh, by me alerting you to any shortcomings before uh, that uh, may happen can save you hundreds and thousands of dollars and also fines. So uh, <clears throat> also, if your boat passed all of the safety inspections, I was allowed to put that USCG uh, inspection uh, label, the, the uh, tag on your boat with the current year so that uh, any time that you were out on the water and you were approached by any law enforcement, they could automatically see that your boat was USCG inspected and passed for that year. So they won't be asking uh, typically for any information or 
doing their safety checks out on the water. So this just speeds things up for you. But also it, it shows that you were a very responsible boater. You had insurance, you had all the safety equipment, you had current registration, you had the uh, uh, tossable uh, life preserver, uh, which was uh, required. You had all the fire extinguishers and the proper sizes on board. So there are a lot of things uh, that we were looking for, but also uh, safety equipment on board the boats. If you were uh, a lake boat, there was a certain requirement. If you were on the bay, there were certain things. And then if you went outside the, the Golden Gate uh, Bridge, into the Pacific Ocean. There were other mandates and requirements for you to have on your boat in the event of an emergency. And, and so I just helped keep you out of trouble. If I found violations, you know, I, I wrote them up, you know, but they were not, uh, uh, there's no fine involved, but it was essentially like a, a fix it ticket and, and it allowed you the opportunity uh, to uh, fix those items and those shortcomings uh, before uh, you might be stopped by any law enforcement boat on the water or a USCG uh, patrol boat. And, and uh, they can stop you on the water. And, and the thing is, you cannot, you cannot refuse them on, on board your boat, uh, period. And some people believe that they can refuse um, the uh, uh, lawful uh, detainment of your boat and uh, coming aboard your boat. No, that, uh, that you do not have that right. Uh, they have the right to uh, come on board for whatever reason, any reason to inspect. And you cannot refuse them if you refuse them. Uh, your boat is subject to confiscation and everybody on board being arrested. Uh, and I've seen it done. And, and um, it's not pretty. Uh, but all of our uh, classes were free back then except for the materials. Materials typically were anywhere from 20 up to $50 for your reading materials, your books, and, and your, your test materials. So it wasn't very expensive, but you got a certificate at the end. You also got a boating safety card to keep in your wallet because at the time uh, in California, you are you were not you were not required to have a boat to be boating safety certified in the state of California. But it was making its way across the country and had been. Uh, uh, requirement in many many states in fact uh, at the time uh, when I moved to North Carolina North Carolina was one of those boating safety requirement states and, and so I had my US uh, um, uh, power squadron uh, boating safety certificate with the USCG stamp on it so I was already boating safety approved and I was automatically put into the system as approved because of that. Uh, I've, I fulfilled that requirement so that I can register my boat in the state of North Carolina. Uh, so things, things had moved around. Uh, I don't know where it is anymore, but uh, it's probably still not a mandate uh, because uh, boating just really fell off the map. Uh, guys, price of housing. Nobody can afford to buy a boat anymore because they can't afford to even go out and have fun. And they struggle to shop in the grocery stores and keep food in the in the home and on the shelves and in the refrigerator for the family. So boating is definitely uh, been off the list and, and uh, a dying industry for over a decade. And, and at least since 2007 i know it's gotten worse so anyway uh, i'm going to get back into it there's been a lot of new uh, um, tech uh, inventions and creations that have advanced uh, boating uh, and now boating is, has been uh, uh, changing and switching over to going electric and, and so uh, that's going to be interesting to see what we come up with because uh, Driving a boat and powering a boat 
is very, very different from that of a land vehicle uh, because the power is always on on a boat. Whereas on a car, once you get up to speed, the uh, engine can drop back and uh, use a minimum amount of en engine power to maintain um, speed and and uh, uh, where their and their direction. Whereas on a boat, there's a constant load on the engine, and so the engine can never back off uh, without losing speed. But there's been some incredible uh, breakthroughs, and, and I like the new electric uh, hydrofoils that we're seeing because you get an improved ride and speed, and and you're going to use far less energy because you don't have the surface area uh, like on a standard boat. Uh, my 26 footer uh, actually had a special uh, racing style hull. It was called a stepped hull on that boat, and, and that. Uh, injected a lot of extra air into underneath the boat and so that the boat actually rides higher at speed and there's less water resistance because air is being injected and, and lifting the boat and creating less what is called stiction uh, and that's the stickiness uh, and the resistance that the boat uh, um, uh, heads into and that's what uh, eats up uh, your fuel and slows your boat uh, but with uh, hydrofoils you, you you're actually flying through the water and, and there's virtually uh, no it's kind of like uh, a, a stealth fighter for the water because uh, it has such a small footprint and, and a small body that it just flies through the water and and you can maintain uh, uh, power boat speeds you know, with a hydrofoil as we see in sailing uh, the the uh, racing boats in the World Cup uh, of sailboats those boats are able to get 55 miles an hour on the water with just a sail so and they're hydrofoils and so we know that uh, they're very energy efficient and same with the uh, the new electric boat. So that's what I'll be looking at once uh, I get to my housing situation and a possible business up and running to maintain everything. So um, I always in, enjoyed the 4th of July weekend. Uh, it was my getaway. I could take my time. My wife and I uh, and the dogs, we just cruise. Uh, we go up to Rio Vista and, and have fun, but also, uh, my presence on the water because I, I also carried my uh, federal uh, credentials at, for the Department of Defense. I was always armed, had, had uh, my guns, I had two guns on board, uh, a long gun and my handgun uh, all the time. And it's legal to carry that on board the boat, but you just have to notify any law enforcement officer that you have those on board um, before they come aboard so notify them of that but also I notified them that I was also uh, a credentialed federal uh, um, contractor and, and so uh, they asked to see my uh, credential which I showed them and then they ran ran that and it also because of, of uh, my credential, they also knew that I was uh, licensed uh, for carry, and those were my official uh, work uh, weapons that were on board. So uh, I was 100% legal. So that what that does, it, it gives, uh, in the event of an emergency on the Delta, um, USCG puts out calls on channel 16 and uh, asking for, uh, volunteer assistance in the event of emergency like a boat on fire or sinking uh, or uh, they give out warnings called pon pons you know, or it's spelled p-a-n dash p-a-n pan pan pon pon uh, those are warnings that of uh, things that are in the water hazards that are in the water to be aware of whereas uh, uh, maydays uh, by the u.s coast guard are often uh, 
you are, if you were out on the bay and on a marine uh, band radio, channel 16, you would hear the U.S. Coast Guard. And then on t at times, uh, once they made contact with you, you would switch over to channel 22A uh, and then talk to the USCG directly about what your problem is. And from there, USCG can come back to channel 16, put out a mayday uh, call for volunteers to uh, come to the aid of uh, or rescue of that vessel in distress on the water. And so uh, with me, uh, that uh, came about a couple of times uh, where uh, I was involved with uh, being uh, first on site uh, rescue. Uh, one was uh, right right here in the bay near the Golden Gate Bridge. And then the other was uh, on Lake Sonoma, uh, where uh, I discussed in an earlier video uh, what happened, a, a boating accident uh, back in 1998. Uh, uh, the boat's uh, hull was overpowered, and the boat literally imploded, instantly killing the two young men that owned that boat. So... Uh, I was a safety officer, uh, and I can uh, I acted as the, a first reporting um, a respondent and, and a rescue uh, service uh, that was em employed. So uh, <clears throat> it gives extra extra uh, help out on the water for a fiercely understaffed uh, uh, water. Uh, crew, sheriff's departments, uh, USCG, the Coast Guards, uh, the Coasties. Uh, I know a lot of Coasties. Uh, they're my friends. Uh, and so we, we all get along really well. And then uh, we do uh, at times kid each other. So, But uh, it was fun. Uh, my service, my volunteer service uh, for boating safety here in the Oakland, uh, San Francisco Bay area. I was the... Uh, I enjoyed my time that I spent with uh, the U.S. Uh, um, Powers and Sales Squadron. Uh, I learned a lot uh, in terms of uh, bay boating and uh, cooperating with uh, other uh, water law enforcement agencies such as sheriff's departments, uh, harbor patrols, and uh, the United States Coast Guard. So I wish everybody a very safe and sane uh, Fourth of July weekend. Keep uh, yourself uh, safe. Avoid DUIs. You don't want a DUI on the water. They're double worse than getting one on land because one on the water also affects your driver's license. So uh, only drink and when you are done boating on the water. All weekend long because there's going to be extra law enforcement out looking for drunks this weekend thanks for joining me we'll be right back